it's very standard that you will have to present your research. What is up everyone? Welcome back to my channel, Road to PhD. My name is Kimberly and I plan on getting my PhD, so come on this journey with me. If you're new to this channel, please go ahead and hit that subscribe button because it helps other people, just like you, find this video. And while you're there, might as well give it a like. Summer. Today we'll be talking about what to expect at your summer internship and what you should do to prepare. So let's jump right into it. So if you're watching this video, first of all, I want to say congratulations on getting a summer internship experience and committing to one you're on your way to being an amazing scientific researcher or whatever field this is in you're on your way to being great and becoming an expert and getting all the experience that you need so first and foremost i want to say that the months before the internship usually it starts in may or june you should be reaching out to faculty whoever is in charge of your program should have sent you a list of who you'll be working with if they haven't feel free to go ahead and email them and ask them um, whose lab will I be in this summer? You know, in a nice, polite way, of course. And then you email them and you ask them for preliminary papers. Papers that will give you background information about what you will be researching this summer. It's really important that you have this strong background, this foundation, so that it really helps you understand what you'll be doing on a day-to-day um, -day basis. What big picture, what problem are you trying to solve? The best way to go about this if you're new to reading papers is literally just getting the abstract, reading the abstract, going to the discussion, seeing what they're talking about. Um, if any papers are referenced, which they usually are, you can go to those papers. Um, I like to skip around papers. I usually read the abstract, then the discussion, then the introduction, um, then the materials and methods. You can read it straightforwardly if you'd like. Um, it's up to you. It's trial and error, but I definitely say trying your best to read the paper will help and that will also give you some credibility. It will help you not have as much imposter syndrome if you do already have that because you will see, okay, this is what they're doing. If you have any questions and you probably do have questions, feel free to email the PI now saying, hi, I read the paper. I have a question about this and this and this. Can we set up a call to talk about it? Is there anyone in your lab who's willing to talk to me about this? Um, because they're busy too, but they'll be very grateful that you're taking the initiative and that you're serious about it before you even get there. And that is amazing. So the next thing I wanna emphasize is that you should definitely be asking questions as much as possible. Um, definitely make sure that literally if it comes to your mind and you can't figure it out, figure it out, ask questions. The lab is a great place to be curious and to explore every avenue that you can within reason, of course. So asking questions, regardless of if you think they're, they're nonsensical or if they don't matter, every question matters. And I'm sure whoever you'll be working with, whether it's the PI or the lab tech or grad student or an undergraduate student who's also in the lab, They'll be more than happy to help you figure out how to find the answer if they don't have it themselves. Please do not convince yourself that your questions don't matter because they 100% do. And this is a perfect opportunity for you to have faith and confidence in yourself and continue to ask these questions. Another thing I want to emphasize is that because the program is kind of long, eight to 12 weeks is usually the, the length and sometimes the average is about 10 weeks, um, a lot of people forget what they do, right? So what I have learned from my experiences of doing two of these and we'll be doing one in the summer coming up is to have a, a notebook or um, a Google Doc where every week you sit down pick the same day a week so you don't um that so that it becomes a habit and you literally write down the skills and the tasks that you did that week and you can ask the lab tech or the pi the grad student or the undergraduate student what that technique is called so for example i remember my summer in at uc san diego i learned corneal coloscopo corneal microscopy cornucopy i don't know my first I remember at UC San Diego, I learned a lot about rodent care, the rotor rod, doing tests on mice, and just also just, um, I think it was corneal microscopy, like putting mice eyes into like a microscope, but it had a specific name. All those things are helpful when you are 
trying to describe what you've done for the summer in a personal statement the next year or on your resume when you're listing techniques and skills and it's hard to look back on the past and remember everything that you did it also as i said helps you not feel like an imposter because you're taking notes of what you've been doing and it really helps for you to see that okay i've been doing this and i've been doing that i'm definitely contributing to something and that's definitely very helpful so definitely have that down pat if this is in person please bring two different professional clothing you never know there might be an opening ceremony or a closing ceremony or there might be a professional workshop or there might be like um something that you need to present usually at the end uh so you definitely want to make sure that you have two options of professional clothing you can go for three if you'd like um i i, I haven't needed more than three suits of professional clothing before unless you're working at an, a regional office and i did that for mert i was working at an office so i needed professional clothes the whole time but you're going to be in a lab you're probably going to be wearing casual clothes so let's transition into clothes um you should be wearing things that cover you up not in a modest way or anything but because you're working in a lab you don't want to expose your skin too much to any harsh chemicals it's typical lab safety that we've all been learning in in our laboratory skills classes you know no open-toed shoes no your legs shouldn't be showing um, minimal arms because you should be having your should be wearing your lab coat if this is in person and so you also want to consider that as well so definitely make sure that you have shoes that are comfortable that you definitely feel comfortable wearing and that you should definitely um continue to um just just feel as comfortable as possible shoes that support your feet because you might be standing a lot and also um just anything that you feel comfortable wearing anything that will give you confidence and hopefully no t-shirts with derogatory terms on it so definitely keep that in mind also sometimes if you're working in a life sciences lab it is really cold down there i remember at uc san diego it was the basement um i used to wear long sleeves and maybe had a sweater on uh, and then my lab coat on top of it so definitely just make sure you have like one or two sweaters or cardigans that you can you know wear throughout the the week as well and be, if this is in person i definitely recommend bringing bringing an umbrella because it might rain once or twice so yeah and um a bathing suit because you never know where these um your cohort mates would like to go if it's in person they might want to go to the beach or the pool once it is still summertime and you might want to be prepared um wear whatever makes you comfortable of course so let's talk about money and your personal savings um when it comes to these programs they usually give you huge chunks of money at once it's not like you get paid every week or every two weeks they usually pay you twice once in the beginning one at the end or once in the middle one at the end or once in the beginning one in the middle uh, these are huge lump sums of money i'm talking maybe like two thousand five hundred at a time or maybe two thousand at a time or they might give it to you all at once you definitely want to make sure that you are responsible with that money if it's your first time getting a huge sum like that so i'd say before the summer the summer starts try to figure out where you want your money to go remember you should be telling where your money where it should be going not the other way around so is this something you want to split up and save some for the school year or save some for textbooks or save some for grad school application fees it literally just make sure that you have that plan before you get it obviously you're gonna want to buy groceries and maybe go out and everything but those can be limited to a budget as well so i would definitely say sit down and figure out where you want this money to go and especially if this is your first research experience it's a lot of money coming at you at once but it's supposed to support you over half of that time so it's supposed to last you five weeks or six weeks do you have to pay rent do you have to pay utilities all these things and so definitely take that into consideration so since we were talking about money let's talk about taxes and forms so these programs are most likely going to ask you to fill out a w-9 which means that you are responsible for paying the taxes back they will not be withholding the taxes from you so definitely talk to your parents or if they have a financial advisor or a personal attorney, not attorney, a personal tax, a personal accountant. If they have a personal accountant, definitely ask them like what or how much you should be withholding to pay back and also figure out um, if there's anyone in the program, like any program managers or administrators 
who know like the amount and can give you tips or anything like that especially if you're an, an international student if you're a student in general the irs is not someone to play with but definitely just ask i do know that they're under a certain amount of money do not quote me i am not a financial advisor but under a certain amount of money you don't have to pay taxes on um when it's a w-9 but definitely please see a personal accountant or see if you can google it i'm not sure but please don't please don't ask me because i i don't know every situation is different like as, especially depending on the institution and the amount you're being paid so another thing to look forward to this summer is journal club journal club was very new to me especially at my first internship which was uc san diego i will continue to say that over and over again because it was such a an eye opener so a journal club usually the lab you're in will pick people um every week they will present a paper that has to do with the research you're doing so you can stay on top of the current biomedical research and also feel confident presenting because part of research is also presenting your work to people who know exactly what you're talking about and people who have no clue what you're talking about so you have it's a delicate balance and you have to master that and the best way to master it is through practice and that's why a journal club exists so you might be thrown into the loop at journal club i would say definitely make sure that you are prepared read the paper write down any questions you have you don't have to dissect it 100 percent like unless you're the one presenting it if you're presenting it make sure you practice 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 that's the best way to um, do well on these presentations practice give it your best and then give the rest to god and then if you are sitting down and receiving a presentation still go over the paper and have any questions that you have or need clarified you can ask the presenter or maybe they clarify it while they're presenting um, but it's just so that you make sure you're getting out as much information as possible from the experience so that is how you succeed in journal club so one other thing i want to say is don't be afraid or intimidated everyone there is there to help you most likely your program is not new this might be the second year of the program or the 10th year or the 12th year of the program they definitely have experienced students before whether it's formal or informal they understand that you don't know everything and they don't expect you to know everything they just want you to be eager to learn and willing to adapt be open and flexible and so ask questions ask for help and just know that they're not judging you they're there to help you and these people were also trained by someone else before it is a cycle you will train someone in the future and they're training you right now and so literally just literally be there to learn and please if you can get out of your head no one is out here judging you or wishing you harm or don't want you to succeed we all want you to succeed because especially when it comes to science collaboration is key um i want to end this on a high note i want to say to make sure that you have fun go to activities that they plan for you um if it's a beach day if it's a museum day even if it's a virtual event where it's like an online game or something that you can play together um virtually definitely go because it will help strengthen relationships and it will make you feel like you're part of something bigger than yourself make friends if you can if you and someone hit it off um, try to stay in contact with them even after the program that's a mistake that I made I would like make friends during the program and then once the school year started I kind of forgot about them and then when I remembered them it was like a year later or maybe even a year and a half I'm like how do I reach out and say hi it's been a long time so definitely still reach out like maybe once a quarter or every month however you feel the frequency is needed um, definitely continue because now these people end up being your network because especially in science you will probably see them at abercams or conferences they'll probably be applying to grad schools and the funnel gets smaller and smaller so you'll be running into these people who continue the path of going to you know conferences getting their masters getting their phds doing postdocs running labs 
these people it, it just gets smaller and smaller it becomes more niche and you might run into them more and more so definitely continue that friendship obviously make it unique and genuine but i'm just saying it's very easy to fall off the bandwagon and stop communicating with the people in your summer program so if you have a group meet if you have a chat continue talking in that chat and if you only talk to one person afterwards i still consider it a success so the last thing that will happen and that will close out your program is your end of summer conference where you present your research whether it's called a symposium or a research conference um, but it's very standard that you will have to present your research when presenting your research at a conference make sure you talk to your pi maybe three weeks before and say um, the date is coming up i would really like some guidance on how to make my poster or make my presentation what points i should hit and i would like to schedule three practice runs with you i definitely recommend two to three practice runs with your pi but you should be practicing on your own as well practice makes perfect 100 percent, and it will help you take away your nerves there will be questions at the end there are always questions at the end whether it's for judges or anyone in the audience you should practice with people who know exactly what you're talking about and you should practice with people who have no idea what you're talking about this way you can find a gauge on how to figure out the delicate balance between the language that you'll be using the specific jargon you'll be using how long it is if it's an oral presentation it's most likely going to be 10 minutes but if it's a poster it varies based on how many people will be coming around and talking to you so you have to make sure that you have enough enough time as well like you should have a short version if it's poster a medium version if it's poster and a long version if it's poster um you need to have a version where if it's somebody an expert in your field you need to be able to explain to them on their level and if it's somebody who's not an expert in your field you have to be able to explain to them on their level too i am not saying this to scare you i am just saying this to say that it does happen every single summer you will have to present that research and you most likely will present it in the following months at a national conference so practice makes perfect use the opportunity to get better um as long as you get it done that's all that matters so yeah if you're an undergrad in college make sure you check out my college playlist i'll link it right here um fill out my nutrition form it's linked below it would mean the world to me it's 30 seconds Make sure you subscribe again and thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for joining me on this journey, PhD Roadies, and I will see you on the road. Bye!